Well, hey there, and welcome back to Online Financial Foundations. This is lesson number six, tracking your numbers. So in lesson number six, you are going to learn why it's important to track your numbers, what an accounting system actually does, how to choose and set up the perfect accounting system for your business, and how to maintain your books and records. So let's go ahead and dive in. So first, let's talk about why it's important to track your numbers. Tracking your numbers makes your life a lot easier come tax time. But by the way, this is not the only reason to do it. Stick with me. Tracking your numbers also allows you to monitor the financial health of your business. Let me just tell you, being able to log into my accounting system on a regular basis makes a huge difference because I am always able to see where my revenues are at, where my profits are at, if I'm in line with my goals and what I need to change in order to hit them. Tracking your numbers also gives you the information you need to make more money by being able to see which of my revenue streams are more profitable or where I've overspent on expenses. I can make adjustments and pivots that will actually allow me to be more profitable. So having a really good system to track your numbers is one of the most important steps in the early stages of your business. And I know I say this about everything we've talked about today and we'll continue to talk about, but I truly believe that this is one of the most important things you need to do to move your business forward financially. So let's talk about what an accounting system actually does. The purpose of an accounting system is threefold. Number one, it tracks your revenues and expenses, so the money coming in and the money going out. It also tracks your account balances, whether that's your bank account or if you've got a credit card or you've got any liability uh, accounts like loans, for example, outstanding. And an accounting system provides reporting on a real-time basis. So as I mentioned, at any given point, I can log into my accounting system and see exactly where my business stands financially. Now, before we go any further, I want to give you a quick accounting 101 lesson in case this is all very, very new to you. So there are a couple of statements or reports that get talked a lot about in the business world and in the financial world. And we're going to go through each of them and just talk very, very briefly about their purpose and what they show. So the first is the profit and loss report, sometimes called an income statement. And this one is pretty simple and also really important. The profit and loss statement shows you your total revenues, also broken out by category. It shows you your expenses, broken out by category, and then it shows you your profit. And you can have a profit and loss statement for the year or for the month, or you can have a comparative profit and loss statement where we might look at this year compared to last year. But this is a really important report to get familiar with in your business. Now, you probably already know this, but very briefly, I just want to make it clear that when we're looking at our P&L or our profit and loss statement, as we call it, what we're looking at is essentially a formula. Our revenues minus our expenses gets us down to our profits. So as you're looking at your P&L, it's really important to remember this formula because the more expenses you have, the lower your profits are. The more revenues you have, if your expenses stay the same, the higher your profits. Now here's an example of a profit and loss statement. This is a very, very basic statement. This is actually copied out of Wave. I'll talk about them in a second, but for anyone considering an accounting system, I really like Wave apps. And so as you can see on the left side, it's listing the different categories, and on the right, it lists the amounts. This happens to be a P&L for January 1st through March 22nd, but you can choose it for any date you want. So as you can see, we've had sales of $1,000. We've had operating expenses of $150, $50 for office supplies, $100 for hosting computer. And that brings us down to our net profit of $850. So this is a very informative report that we can pull in our business. Now, the next type of report to be aware of is your balance sheet. Without going too far down the accounting rabbit hole, I do just want to mention one thing here. When it comes to tax, we have a concept called accounting method. An accounting method generally refers to the method of how we, how and when we report our revenues and our expenses. And there are generally two methods. There's the cash method and the accrual method. Now, the cash method means that we report our expenses in our financial records when we get cash physically in. So if somebody buys something from me right now and gives me $1,000, I'm going to report that right now. On the expense side, we report under the cash method, we report our expenses 
as soon as we pay them. So if I have a $200 bill and I go pay it right now, boom, I've reported it. The accrual method works a little bit differently. The accrual method says we report income as earned whether or not someone's paid the bill. So I finish a product or a project and I send off the invoice. They haven't paid it yet, but I'm going to re record the income. And for expenses under the accrual method, we record them as incurred even if we haven't paid them yet. So I purchase a computer, but I haven't fully paid the bill for that yet doesn't matter, I've incurred the expense, I'm gonna report it right now. Most of you are probably cash basis method taxpayers, meaning you report your income as you get the cash and you report your expenses as they go out the door. The reason I bring this up is because for cash method folks, we typically don't have a balance sheet, at least not too much, because a balance sheet doesn't, real under the cash method, doesn't really show things we haven't paid for, or things we haven't gotten money in for. So I just wanna point that out to say your balance sheet may actually be very, very simple, but nonetheless, it's still really important to look at the items that are actually on yours. So there are generally three categories of items on a balance sheet. Number one are assets. These would be things like our bank accounts. If we have um, furniture or inventory, those are all assets of our business. Then we have our liabilities. These would be loans. These might be uh, outstanding bills we haven't paid yet. And then we have equity. Equity has a few different components, but generally speaking, it consists of stuff we've put in as the owners, so money I've contributed to the business, money I've taken out of the business, distributions, and then also our profits or loss. All of that together gets us to our equity. So if we look at the formula here, the formula on our balance sheet is actually assets equals our liabilities plus our equity. So here's an example of a sample balance sheet. Uh, you can see at the top there, we've got our assets. So we've got $1,350 in our bank account. That's the total cash and bank, no other assets. And then for liabilities, we don't have any liabilities. We're a cash basis taxpayer. We're not reporting any liabilities there. And for equity, we've got the same 1350 because in this case assets equals liabilities minus equity 1350 equals 1350 and notice how our equity is broken out we've got total other equity of $500 that might be owners contributions money we put into the business and then we've got $850 that's our profits for the year if you remember back to our, our P&L statement we had $850 of profits so those are our profits for the year your balance sheet is always going to balance which brings me to a quick tip. Whenever we're thinking about accounting, remember that there are two sides to every accounting entry. So for example, if cash comes in, I made a sale, let's just say, cash comes into my bank account, I'm going to debit my bank account for $1,000. And I'm also going to uh, report that $1,000 as income received, a credit in this case. So those two transactions balance each other out. Now, I know that may seem like a lot, and accounting is one of those concepts that can often be really hard to understand in theory, but a lot easier to grasp in practice. So as you might have already suspected, your action item for this lesson is going to be to, to open up your own accounting system and get that started for your business. And as you go through, I think you'll start to see what I'm talking about as you're entering transactions in. So speaking of which, let's talk about how to choose and set up an accounting system. There are a few different things I like to consider when I'm thinking about what accounting system would be best for my business. The first are the features. What features do you need? Do you just need basic features like tracking transactions and reporting? Or do you need advanced features like payroll or invoicing or sales tax? What about features you're gonna need as you grow? Maybe you don't have employees now, but you will next year, and so you want payroll capabilities. Think about those features and again, try to choose something that's going to grow with you as your business grows. I've said it before, but let's also look at those integrations. Does your accounting system automatically pull in transactions from your bank account? I mentioned this in the bank accounts lesson. Some of those smaller, more local banks don't always have this capability. So we want to make sure that our accounting system can talk to our bank uh, so that those transactions come in automatically. What about your sales channels? Is this something you care about? And if so, can your accounting system pull in the data from your sales channels as well, whether that be uh, Stripe or PayPal or uh, Shopify or whatever you use? What about cost? 
What's the monthly fee for the accounting system? Are there additional fees for add-on features or users that are gonna drive up your price? I also like to look at usability. So can multiple users access the system? Maybe you have a bookkeeper or you have a VA who's also gonna help you do this work. Make sure they can get access to it as well. Is it cloud-based or on your computer? Let me just tell you, cloud-based, in my opinion, is the best way to go so that you can access it on the go and so that other people can access it. I happen to have a, a couple of clients who use desktop-based accounting systems, and it is a massive pain in the butt when I need to access their system because I have to remote into their computer to get access. It's not fun. So cloud-based is definitely the way to go. And then also, is the accounting system easy to use? Is it easy to update? I can't stress this point enough. If it is not easy for you to use, you will not use it on a regular basis. And that is really critical to choosing a good accounting system for your business. Because at the end of the day, if you're not gonna use it regularly, if you're not gonna keep it updated, then you're not serving the purpose of having an accounting system. So choose something that you find easy to use and easy to update. Some things specifically that I like to look for, easy to set up and use, I've already mentioned that, I just wanna reiterate that here, that it syncs with your accounts, this is high on my list as well, and that it's a, that it's a reasonable price. Uh, especially when you're starting your business out, I don't want you spending a ton of money on a, a robust accounting system that you don't really need. This is a place where you can potentially save your money. So I'm gonna talk about two accounting systems in particular. Um, there are many, many, many out there, certainly, um, but these are kind of the two popular ones, at least that I talk about in my world. The first is Wave Apps, and I believe their website is waveapps.com. I love Wave Apps for most people. Few of the reasons why I love Wave Apps, number one, it's free. Now, if you use their invoicing platform, which by the way, they have invoicing, which is great, I love that. If you use their invoicing, you will pay payment processing fees, but we've already talked about that. That's standard, you're gonna pay those wherever you go. And they do have add-on features like payroll or bookkeeping at additional prices. But the basic Wave Apps is completely free, and by the way, is pretty much what most people need. I have been on Wave Apps for four years and I have never paid for it. So I love them for that. I also love that it's easy to set up and easy to use. I think if, especially if you're not an accounting person, if when I was talking about debits and credits and, and the balance sheet balancing and you know cash method and all that, if that made your head really, really hurt, Wave Apps may be a great option for you because Wave Apps is really designed for folks who don't really understand accounting very easy to use. I cannot stress this enough. So another option that comes up a lot in my world is QuickBooks. Now, I don't hate QuickBooks, but I don't tend to recommend QuickBooks for most of my clients for the big reason that it's more than most of y'all need. QuickBooks can get really expensive really quickly. In fact, I don't remember the exact base price, somewhere around the $20 mark, but it can go up to $150, $200 a month. And a lot of the times, my folks who are paying for QuickBooks are getting so many more features than they ever need or ever will use. Now, QuickBooks can be good if you've got employees and you wanna do payroll through it, or if you want other advanced features like inventory tracking or sales tax, then QuickBooks can be a great option. But if you don't need any of that, I personally think QuickBooks is more robust uh, and more expensive than what you actually need to deal with. And a lot of my folks have said that they find it harder to set up and use because it really is designed for a bookkeeper to use. It's designed for someone who understands accounting. So if you're going to be doing your own uh, uh, bookkeeping and accounting work, at least even at the beginning, QuickBooks may not be the best option for you. Now, once you've chosen your accounting platform, let's talk about actually getting it set up. I'm gonna show you how to do this on Wave, but it's gonna be similar on QuickBooks. So step number one, once you open your account, is to sync your account with your bank account. Remember, this is the really important part because we want those transactions to come in automatically so that we don't have to do that extra manual entry. Step number two is to customize your account. So within your accounting system, they're gonna give you some default accounts. And if you notice at the top of my screen here, it says assets, liabilities and credit cards, income, expenses, and equity. Remember, those are our categories on our balance sheet and on our profit and loss statement. They're gonna give you some basic categories within there. I'm in the income section, so they've got product sales and sales, grants and awards, uncategorized income. But you may wanna add some other things in. For example, in my accounting system, I've got tax prep. 
I've got my course, I've got my membership. That way I can track where my revenues are coming from within my accounting system instead of just lumping it all into sales. So now is the time to really customize these accounts and get them set up the way you want them. And that's it. Once you've done those two steps, your accounting system is set up. Now we have to talk about what you actually do with it once it is set up. So let's talk about how to maintain your books and records on a regular basis. Every month, here's what I want you to do. And actually, by the way, if you're just starting out, you may want to do this twice a month so that you kind of get in the hang of it and you're not leaving it all to the end of the month. But once a month, I want you to go into your accounting system and I want you to do three things. Number one, I want you to review your transactions. Make sure that everything is in there. Make sure that it came in correctly. Make sure nothing got duplicated. Make sure that um, all of the categories are correct, that your income is, is put to the right income category, your expenses are put to the right category. Check everything. I also want you to reconcile your accounting system to your bank statements. So I want you to check, this is where you're gonna to check to see is my bank balance, uh, pardon my dog, he gets really excited about accounting systems, if y'all can hear that. Um, it, it, does my bank balance match what's in my accounting system? And then lastly, you're gonna follow up on outstanding invoices and bills. You're gonna see, well, what's outstanding that's owed to me and what's outstanding that I owe to other people and you're gonna make sure that those get taken care of. So your action step right now is to choose your accounting system and get it set up. In this lesson, you learned why it's important to track your numbers, what an accounting system does, how to choose and set up an accounting system, and how to maintain your books and records. In the next lesson, you're going to learn all about business taxes and how to prepare for tax time.